Ask not what we are be can do for you. Ask what you can do for we all be. I am now here with legendary with his media personality, Brother Thaddeus Matthews. He heard what Brother Joe, uh, Judge Joe Brown has said about you, and you like to offer a response, correct, sir? Well, thank you, uh, Ron, first of all, for this opportunity to appear uh, on your program. And legendary, you know, they say most legends are dead, and I, and I, still, and I still have a whole lot of life left. Let me, let me put it very simply. Uh, when it comes to Joe Brown. Joe Brown is a broke opportunist who wants to be a boss. It is very clear that when Joe Brown first came into this area, uh, I totally supported Joe Brown. In fact, after my indictment last year uh, that came out the day after Thanksgiving, and I saw how unjust uh, the District Attorney General's office is, I made the initial contact to Joe Brown about coming into the area and thinking about running for the office. He's, he came into the area, he appeared on my show about four or five times. In various conversations with Joe Brown, he always mentioned the fact that he was going to be the boss. And at first I just thought he was just kidding, or just it's just his ego playing itself out, being a so-called TV star who has his show canceled last year because of his behavior and his mannerisms with CBS. Um, I took him as a joke. Then he made it public that he wants to be the boss of local democratic politics. I have a problem with any public servant calling himself the boss. The word that Joe Brown should have been using is that I want to be a servant for the people, not one who is going to run democratic politics of politics in this area. That's where our problem came in because I will not support a boss whether you are black, white, uh, Democrat, or Republican. So that's where our problem came. I noticed in your interview that he also said that I hit him up for some money. I never asked Joe Brown for one thing, and damn if I sure don't need Joe Brown for my ratings. My ratings in this market are always number one, and I didn't need Joe Brown, don't need Joe Brown to make my show. Yes, sir. That was a, you never took any money, or you never asked for what she's saying. I never asked Joe Brown for one thin dime. Joe Brown is a damn liar. Uh, our first big fall right now came, and I have a copy of a text that one of his persons, Rita Burden, had sent to uh, a person by the name of Dewey Clark. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to figure out, because I had told my audience that we can no longer just be a Democratic audience or blacks cannot just vote uh, unconsciously uh, for Democrats. We need to see who the Democrats are, what are they bringing to the table, what is their agenda before we vote for them aimlessly. A text went out that was directed by Joe Brown, that I'll send you a copy of if you want it, that says, "How? what do we do about Thaddeus Matthews? Judge Joe wants to know what can we do about Thaddeus Matthews. And Joe Brown and I had a real cussing match because I told him that nobody controls me and I'm not excited about his so-called uh, star status. What about the allegations you said that you are in the pocket of the Republicans, that they control you? How long have you known me, man? You know me a long time. Yes, sir. And nobody controls me in the pockets of the Republicans. If the Republicans spend some advertising dollars, I'm going to take their advertising dollars. Have I solicited dollars from the Republican Party? Yes, I have, just like I have from Democrats. It seems that Democrats don't have any money. That show that I produce costs $7,000 a month. How is it paid for? It's paid for with advertising. I spend nearly $100,000 a year to bring information into this community. So, uh, yeah, I go after the uh, Republican dollars. I go after uh, anybody that wants to advertise when they're running for office. I go after their money. You also claim that you take advantage of female candidates, like you're exploiting them. In the interview, you said that. No, here's what I – here's what – 
it's whether he wants to call him female or male. If you come on the Thaddeus Matthews show and you're running for office, you have to have advertising. You're running for office that is not only uh, to be a public servant, but you're running to get paid. You're running for $100,000 a year jobs. You want to go to white media, you'll pay white media, you'll pay three, five, thirteen, the commercial appeal, but you don't want to spend advertising dollars with a black medium. You cannot come on my show, and I've, I've made it very public. I say it on my program all the time. You can't come on my show for free. So if he calls that extorting, then we'll call it that. But you can't come on my show, and you're spending money on yard signs, you put up billboards, and you expect to come on my show because I hit at least 300,000 households every day. You expect to come on my show for free? No, it don't happen that way. That makes sense. Well, I thought, though, you uh, alleged that he was hiding money. I mean, he's going through a divorce, I believe, right now. I know on your well, Facebook page you say he was probably hiding some money. He's going through a divorce mm-hmm. uh, in California. Okay. Uh, his declaration of uh, income Stated seven months ago, he only had $163,000 in the bank. $163,000 in the bank, $7,500 a month in income, $41,000 in uh, expenses. Does that sound like somebody that has money? Is either somebody that does not have money or someone who is hiding uh, funds from their spouse? Okay, but I'll tell you, it's one of the two. And I'll tell you, you said, I mean, I heard about this Libertunity uh, website, television production company, through your Facebook page. And I asked him about Libertunity. And he said, you know, he, he owned up to it. But you're saying that he's using it as an opportunity to jumpstart his television career, correct? Well, so, no, I, 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 missed, I missed the first part of what you said. Like, he uh, asked him about Libertunity because I heard about it through your website, okay. through your Facebook page. Okay. And he okay. said it is his television production company and that he was not using it as a way, you know, the campaign right now in Memphis. He's not using it as a way to jumpstart his career in television again. Well, when you when you look at the site and you read around it, it says that his show is to start uh, this fall. Mm-hmm. Uh, how can the show start this fall if you expect to be the district attorney general of of Chevy County? That's a good question. Okay, mm-hmm. you, you already have it in production. Uh, it's in California. Uh, you cannot be the district attorney general of Chevy County and a TV star at the same time in California. You can't do the two. But maybe he needs to talk about uh, the fraud that he's already committed with this juvenile court stunt. Okay. Okay? Uh, it was no more than a stunt, which I found out about after uh, it had all come together. It was rigged. Everything about it was rigged so that Joe Brown could get uh, attention. But this statement, these statements that I'm, you know, that I'm hearing that he made on his show, first of all, oh, nobody owns Thaddeus Matthews. Nobody runs Thaddeus Matthews. I've been offered money for many years to take sides in political battles. My premise is this. I am not supporting a straight Democratic ticket. Blacks in this community have a a sense that if you're black, you're supposed to be a Democrat. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent thinker, and that's what I'm inspiring my audience to be on a nightly basis. So he has to come up with this BS on your show to be able to go back and say, well, this is the reason that Thaddeus Matthews is saying don't vote a, a straight Democratic ticket. But our Democrats have not come out and told us why we should vote for them. You've got Deidre Malone who tells you that you shouldn't vote for Mark Luttrell, but you haven't given us a reason why we should vote for you. What are you going to do differently? What are you going to do so much better? What is your format? What is your agenda? And black folk have got to stop taking Democrats and these black uh, so-called leaders at face value and make them represent. I mean, like, he also brought up the child pornography charges against you. And, you know, what do you say about that? The well, first of all, it, it is not called, I have not been charged with child pornography. Mm-hmm. Okay? Sexual exploitation of a minor is totally different than child porn. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yes, I have three charges 
uh, against me uh, as far as placing a picture on an Internet, on my Facebook page to help find a child. Have, have you heard me deny it one time? No, sir. You created it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have not denied the fact that I put that picture on Facebook to find a child. It does not help me involved in no child porn. And you also was the only one charged. I mean, the only one, you know, being, you know, a lens in your own doing in that in a child in that exploitation case. Well, correct? they they came up with two minors that they slapped on the wrist and let go. Uh, they came up with another gentleman who had uploaded that very same purse, that very same picture. Uh, he went, he cut a deal about a month ago. Nothing happened with that. What about the stalking charge? You brought that the, stalking, the, the stalking charge, hell, you know all the problems I went through with a particular female last year. It's right. not even with that particular female. Uh, it was a, it's a friend of hers who put it up who's already admitted in a lower court that she wasn't even present at the time that the alleged stalking was supposed to have taken place. And under the, uh, the law, you have to be present, and it has to be more. Stalking cannot be a one-time event. And when you look at the stalking charge, you have to know the whole premise of I went with bowling hunters to a particular address, this latest address, to pick up a person that I had signed a bond for. I had a legal right to be on that street. Didn't go on the woman's property. The woman is saying that everything that she heard, she heard over a speakerphone. She was in St. Louis, which is not what the law calls for. I'm not worried about that at all. Okay, but I know you have, as you, as you well know, you have made very powerful evidence because of how effective you are with your media platform, the media platform. So you have made a lot of powerful enemies in the city. Well, Joe, Joe Brown is, is, is an enemy now, but he's not powerful. He's an has-been. And see, one of the things that we have looked at when we talk about Joe Brown and mm-hmm. his running for the district attorney general's office, he has not served on the bench in over 20 years in Shelby County. The laws have changed. What is Joe Brown's agenda? Did he tell you what his agenda is, what he's going to do? Well, he told me that he went to like eight minutes in the first part of the show about what he's trying to do. Uh, I guess break kits was a part of it, getting the break kits process. And the so, general so, got off. So wait a minute, Ron. You, you're going to tell me that his whole premise for being the district attorney general is based on the rape kits? What about all the, un, the injustices that have, gone, that have happened in this city? You know, see, one of the things I made sure that I never had a conversation with Joe Brown about was my particular cases, okay? Mm-hmm. So if, if you're building that uh, you're being elected to the district attorney general's office, you're basing it totally on the rape kits, you have no business being in office because there are much more important issues in this community, not saying that that, that is not, than the rape kits. How are people going to feel about the injustices. What about Tom Henderson, who is uh, an assistant district attorney general, who was hiding and suppressing evidence? He got censored last year. What are you, when are you going to mention about you're going to make sure that the people that work on you make sure that they represent the people of this community? When we talk about Bill Giannini, who is the former chairman of the Shelby County Election Commission, former chairman of the Shelby County Republican party now works under bill gibbons tutorage when we talk about him when we talk about he uh was able to drop his sunglasses run into the back of a kid uh car kill a black kid and no he doesn't even get a ticket for seven months and he's let go but another white man doing the exact same thing goes down the street eating some cornflakes drop his cornflakes runs into the back of a car kills a black woman and he's charged with vehicle homicide there is injustices that take place in that particular office that has not been addressed. And if Joe Brown is basing his whole issue around rape kids, he's a damn bigger joke than I thought. Well, you did talk about a little bit about what you just talked about, the corruption and some of the inequality in terms of pressing charges against people. He brought the incident with the Mississippi deputy uh, shot the unarmed sober man on Bill Street. Not uh-huh. long ago. He brought that up, so he did point out some of those things as well. Well, Joe Brown has no business being elected, none whatsoever. He wants to be a political boss and not a public servant. 
and he's a damn liar. Wow. Okay. Uh, wow. So, like, how can we? Uh, how can people listen to the show? I mean, you got a very popular show here. Definitely. I'm on. Uh, I'm on seven to nine Monday through Fridays. On Fridays, I do the blues. Early Saturday mornings, I do the blues. Uh, on Comcast Thirty One. If you do not have Comcast, you can go to sbptvnetwork.com. All right. Thank you so much. And you have any closing thoughts? Do you think Joe Brown will win the DA spot in the fall? Joe Brown, here's what I'm saying. Joe Brown is a joke. And instead of sending Joe Brown downtown, we need to run that clown out of town. Wow. Okay, Brother Patrick, thank you so much for being so candid as usual and also speaking your mind. I really appreciate the work you have done in the community, and we'll let the public decide on who's telling the truth or who's not telling the truth. But also, uh, it is, I'm just thankful that you took the time to respond to this. Thank you, Brother. Thank you, sir. Thank you.